30,000 years later, the innovations of the Ice Age are celebrated in theme parks like this one at Tarascon. Have mainly the, the, the invention of like the that. spear thrower transformed the hunt. Have here a spear thrower. A lot of these have bone or antler part, so uh, you, you can use different woods, uh, anything, and uh, then you just uh, hook it. It goes in the gorge here and just gets armed, and then you throw. So with the spear throw, does it improve the speed or the precision, the distance you can get, or, or the power? I'd say all of that, all of that, because it so it's helps. like having another it, it, joint, on yeah, your arm, another really, joint on yeah. your arm, and yeah. that represents almost the length of your arm. So it's basically a very sophisticated technology designed for a, yeah. a lifestyle of hunting and gathering. Mm. Okay, maybe we should throw yeah. this way in case yeah. you kill someone. <laughs> and then you just aim and shoot. Oh, that's a good one. Want to try? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Go okay. Ahead. This so. one is lighter, actually. Maybe okay. it's easier to use. That's it. Like that. Then you just arm it on the hook. Okay. There. Okay. And there you go. But the greatest technological advance in the Paleolithic period came over 35,000 years ago with man's control of fire. Without light and without heat, you couldn't survive the Ice Age, no matter how many reindeer you killed. Prehistoric man discovered that by striking flint against iron pyrites, he could collect the sparks in dry tree fungus, which would then smolder and start to burn. And he invented the bow drill, not a matter of brute force, but brain power. By keeping a steady rhythm, the fire will ignite. Both methods provide a compact fire-making kit which could be carried around easily and used whenever the owner needed it. Man's control of fire is the first rung on the ladder that leads to the smelting of metals in the Bronze and Iron Ages and results in the foundries and steam engines of the Industrial Revolution. It was the cornerstone of future technology. Three hundred centuries ago, Ice Age men, women and children, families, sat around similar campfires keeping the cold at bay. They were not just surviving this inhospitable environment, they were thriving in it. Their knowledge of their landscape and prey gave them an understanding of the seasons, the sun and the moon. So here we are at a hunter's feast and uh, what I've got on my plate here um, aside from the bread, which is a Neolithic invention, of mushrooms, chestnuts and salad vegetables, all of which would have been provided by women and not by men. Women would have gathered the bulk of the food, so really it should be called a gatherer's feast. The image of the highly intelligent hunter amply providing for his family is still only half the story, maybe less than half. The contribution of women and their role in this society reveals even more about life in the Ice Age. In the old Stone Age hunting grounds in the shadows of the French Pyrenees, we have seen that the people of the Ice Age were just as intelligent as we are today. Now I've moved 200 miles north to the Vézère Valley in the Dordogne. 
Because of its rich prehistoric heritage, it's known as the Valley of Man. But I've come in search of the women and their role in this society. One of the reasons why we underestimate our Stone Age ancestors so often and so systematically is because we only look at half the story. The image of the macho Ice Age hunter single-handedly killing the mammoth has much more to do with the male ego and male archaeologists than with reality. In fact, the Upper Paleolithic diet may have been only 20% meat. So not only is the remaining 80% of food to be accounted for, but also the other 50% of the population gathering it. What about this image then of man, the mighty hunter, who's, you know, whether it's a mammoth or some other huge creature, I mean, attacking it with spears and bringing it home to the wife? I mean, is Who's that not risk standing in front of, next to, beside, behind adult elephants and attempt to kill them with non gunpowder related projectiles? The risk is incredible. It's not an exaggeration to say, as it is for most hunter-gatherers, that females are bringing in a large chunk of the bacon, however you define the bacon. Women and children were providing berries, leaves, fruits, nuts, vegetables, and some meat, like rabbits and hares. We know from the condition of their skeletons that Ice Age people were in very good shape. They had a healthy lifestyle and were living longer than ever before. In fact, studies of skeletons from the later Neolithic period show that with the advent of agriculture, general health and life expectancy went down, not up. So much for progress. It's really the grandmother revolution in the Upper Paleolithic because you have grandmothers for the first time and you've got someone to babysit. Who else are you going to get to babysit? No, seriously. No, no, no I know. It's, it's just surprising to think about. Well, yes, because if no, you, it makes a lot of sense. That frees your... you up to do something exactly. else. Absolutely. Exactly. By Upper Paleo, you're having women living to post reproductive age. You have the grandmother revolution, which has brought us here is one take. You have the tendency in Western society now to think of the old if you burdens essentially on the mm. social system when in point of fact they're repositories not only of infant care kinds of things but knowledge. a whole bunch oh, of knowledge. Mm. They can not only do a lot of things they can tell you a lot of things. For example we know perfectly well to get huge crashes in reindeer populations every 90 to 100 years. We know this from data in northern latitudes. And so here comes Grandpa, you know, who remembers his father telling him that reindeer crashed. And when reindeer crash or when they don't show up, this is how we handle it. Ice Age families were living longer than ever before and taking full advantage of everything the older generation could offer. The grandmother revolution meant that the burden of childcare was shared and women were free to play an increasingly active role in a more complex society. This is where a lot of people come for their summer holidays, not just from other parts of France, but from other countries too. Now, it's a wonderful environment, but in Stone Age times, it was very different. It was like Piccadilly Circus down here. People were coming from what's now Germany and from the Atlantic coast, from further north in France, because this is what archeologists call an aggregation center a place where they would meet relatives, where they exchange goods, raw materials, jewellery, and this is really where they caught up with all the business of the whole region. Thirty-five thousand years ago, this small valley of Castelmel in the Dordogne was the commercial heart of the region. Here, Hundreds of hours of labor were spent transforming the raw material brought down these rivers into thousands of beads. It's really quite stunning to see in these excavations it's hundreds, even thousands of beads, for example. Because they're not just making beads out of any old thing. 
They're making beads basically out of two substances, woolly mammoth ivory and soapstone from exotic sources, hundreds of kilometers away. These are actually beads that are being sewn onto garments, onto uh, presumably skin, animal skin garments, just as a sequined dress, for example, would illustrate today. And that means that the individual elements have to be extremely standardized. They have to be the same shape, the same form, because they constitute individual, almost invisible elements of a larger decorative pattern. We have evidence in this valley that some of the, the stages of this production only exist at certain of the sites here. It leads me to suspect that a part of this process is taking place in one site and then the beads are being finished in another site, which suggests that there may be a division of labor mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's embedded in this, in this process. 